Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I've got some new stories today for you. I've got some follow-up stories today that we've been tracking for a while. And I want to start with one of the creepier stories this morning. They found another body trapped inside of a hole in a building. But this wasn't just any building. It was the Notre Dame. Now, many of you will remember the fire that ravaged Notre Dame Cathedral in France just before the start of the spam demic. And two days after the collapse, we realized that we had seen this collapse before, didn't we? For those of you that have been with the channel, it happened in iPad Goat 2. Watch this. This is three days after the collapse. So I think we were the first ones to see this connection. This went viral, of course. So you guys probably remember that if you've been with the channel for a while, one of the amazing revelations from the Holy Spirit that helps us to connect the dots and get down to the bottom of what's going on. Well, there's an update on old Notre Dame Cathedral, and that is a restoration program. The restoration program is afoot there. And they are scheduled to reopen Notre Dame in 2024, Easter of 2024. But here's the crazy thing. While they were digging around underneath the cathedral, they found something chilling. A lead coffin. And this is where we get into alchemy. Because the spirit world and alchemy overlap, don't they? Now, the cover story which we'll read in a second here for why in the world somebody would be buried in a lead coffin underneath Notre Dame. The cover story is that the body is, was, is preserved after burial when you, when you bury it in lead. And they also say that lead seals tightly and doesn't allow uh, decomposition gases to escape and won't let oxygen in. Now they actually assert here that the decomposition gases from a decomposing body are toxic and poisonous and can kill you. That's what they assert here. Uh, so what, are we going to all wear gas masks when we go to funerals? It's just a ridiculous assertion. But this is their cover story. So, of course, I didn't buy the cover story, right? And I did a little digging. And I discovered some clues about why... The elite blue bloods bury their dead in lead caskets. Now, we're going to read this article first, and then we'll get into what I found. So it says, workers setting up scaffolding at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris discover ancient tomb. Workers racing against a tight deadline to reopen the devastated cathedral of Notre Dame by... Easter 2024, after it was nearly destroyed by fire, sparked by an electrical short three years ago, were shocked to find an ancient graveyard, included a completely preserved human-shaped sarcophagus made of lead in the spot where they were trying to set the scaffolding. The roof and spire of the historic Parisian church were destroyed when a fire swept through the structure. We already got caught up on that. So here are the pictures. Archaeologists working on site as it is the practice in France when working on ancient structures quickly identify the area as an ancient graveyard full of tombs. Uh, you mean they didn't know this before? They didn't have records that people were buried underneath Notre Dame? This just doesn't make any sense. The centerpiece was the, a lead sarcophagus that had buckled under the weight of the church built above it, but remained perfectly sealed. Using a tiny endoscope camera, Workers were able to glimpse inside where they noticed, noted what appeared to be a perfectly mummified corpse. Uh, be careful what you wish for. Because 
I believe that with all this study that we've been doing into vampires and things, this thing could pop up out of the coffin. Let's keep reading here. It had hair and clothing. Archaeologists on site say it was likely a senior dignitary buried in the 1300s, about 100 years after the cathedral was built. You can glimpse pieces of fabric, hair, a pillow of leaves on top of the head. I well, a well-known phenomenon when religious leaders were buried. The fact that these plant elements are still inside means the body is in very good state of conservation. The remnants of the graveyard are of remarkable scientific quality. France's cultural ministry said Tuesday in Paris, where a handful of journalists were allowed on site. The dignitary and others were buried directly below the central nave, above which the original spire was built in 1220. The spire that was destroyed in the fire was built in the mid-19th century after the ancient spire started to decay. Beside the coffin, archaeologists have so far unearthed painted sculptures that include a pair of carved hands, vegetables, and the bust of a yet unidentified bearded man. Other artifacts included remnants from the original church, which has been restored numerous times in its 800-year existence. To stay on track to reopen the cathedral on time, the archaeologists uh, have been given a deadline of March 25th to remove the artifacts or rebury them for the next generation to find. Now, here's where the plot thickens. Because I searched for lead coffin and what its meaning is. And I was shocked to find that this is a common thing for royalty. In fact, Princess Diana was buried in a lead coffin, as are most of these deceased royal family. I mean, could you imagine the weight of these things? I mean, you got the pallbearers carrying these really heavy caskets. Lead is the heaviest of all the elements. Some of these things weighed a quarter ton. So, this lead coffin thing is a tradition for people in royalty or in high class. Let's read this. Why was Princess Diana's coffin lined with lead? So... Many will remember the sight of the coffin decked in flowers and the royal standard flag draped over the coffin. But also the apparent weight of the coffin and how tough the job was for the Welsh guard to carry it. Often bared a weight of a quarter ton because it was lined with lead. It is a tradition that British royals are buried in lead coffins. However, when Diana died, she was no longer married to Prince Charles and only had her little lady diana spencer the fact that she was so famous and so loved among the people in the uk well why meant that she garnered a state funeral and was given a lead coffin lead coffins preserve a body for up to a year here's the cover story they can be sealed airtight and slow the decomposition of the body lead lining and coffin seals it it keeps out the moisture preserves the body for longer it also makes sure that the smell and any toxins from the dead body can't escape and harm the environment. It is law in the UK for a coffin to be sealed if it if it is for internment above ground. Okay, it looks like we were uh, buffering for a little bit, so I just reset everything. Hopefully we'll be back up and running. We won't have any further interruptions. So let's keep going with this because I found something really crazy regarding this lead lined coffin let's read this and you can probably imagine why this thing is buffering because we're about to break this wide open so what is going on well let's get set up here again the significance of lead coffins by the time of the later roman empire coffins were inhumation burials they could be made of wood or clay as well as various types of stone and lead 
Coffins of the first two materials were cheap to manufacture and were available to persons of no great means. The truly destitute were routinely dumped in the ground without a receptacle of any description or with at, least, at best a hastily improvised cover of discarded roof tiles. In terms of the costs of quarrying, transportation, and perhaps most of all, final artistic f finish, the standard Roman stone sarcophagus sculpted in deep relief on either three or four of its sides as well as on its lid was a definite cut above the conventional lead arcu. The richly carved exterior scenes on stone sarcophagi were intended to remain visible to the living, a fact that seems to be borne out by the way in which they are often deployed inside of tombs. Tombs of the Roman imperial age have been described as retrospective on their exteriors, while prospective on their interiors. Thus, the past achievement of their occupants were usually recorded on the tomb facades, while the world to uh, while the world to come was anticipated in scenes on the tomb interiors, and in the iconography and the contents of the individual coffins. But does this pat formula apply to lead coffins? Unlike their stone equivalents, lead coffins are seldom inscribed, and their occupants nearly always remain anonymous. Even references to the decedent's sex are missing, apart from what the grave gifts can tell us. Also, the repetitive cast reliefs on lead coffins themselves often boxed in outer wooden containers before being shoved into long, narrow compartments cut into the bedrock were clearly never intended to be seen by the living once burial had been carried out. Instead, it seems virtually certain that their symbolic messages were directed toward the spirit world alone. Now, it is here where we return full circle to lead. If it is correct to view the cast symbols on the coffin exteriors as forms of magical incantations to ensure on one hand a happy existence after death and on the other hand to fend off evil spirits hovering around the grave, what part is played by the coffin's material? We have been we have seen how lead the dark plumbic element had been used as the chosen medium for delivering curses to the powers of the underworld, as well as to restrain or bind the targets of their incantations long before its, its use for coffins. Centuries later, in medieval times, according to the Encyclopedia of Magic and Superstition, religious relics were often encased in lead caskets to keep their sacred force within an effective boundary and prevent it from dissipating into the air. Presumably echoing the same impulse that led the Greeks to wrap their fortune-telling astragals in lead. In the case of the coffins, the metal's menacing link with the powers of the underworld seems to be prophylactic as well as preventative since the tightly sealed coffins were often themselves tied with symbolic ropes or straps, which worked both to keep out as well as to hold in the malignant spirits. Prophylactic implies that the objective behind the use of the lead was to shield or protect the dead from the powers of evil before their admission to be blessed to a blessed afterlife. A wish that was all, that also led to the practice of encasing the ashes of the dead in lead urns. The use of lead was also to prevent the ghosts of the deceased from escaping their coffins to haunt the living. You guys, this screams vampires to me. It just screams it. Either way, the museum's coffin permits the alert observer to penetrate into the murky sub stratum of popular religion superstition the magic of later antiquity so it's a known thing that lead has been used to keep in and keep out evil spirits now the bible is clear about a few things isn't it it says that the, that the dead know nothing we're basically asleep but it also says that demons possessed humans 
And those demons most likely possess our world leaders. You gotta ask yourself, was the lead casket to either trap these demons in their body or to prevent the corpse from being possessed and rising from its coffin like a vampire? Or you could take it a step further. Because if you wanted to put a vampire to sleep for a few centuries so that it could rise again to rule the world and you wanted to trap that evil spirit in the casket so it could possess a different person down through history uh wouldn't you put it in a lead casket according to what this is saying i think so i think so that's the only reason why i can think of that these elite are doing this now if you think i'm barking up the wrong tree look what happened to a real vampire in peru 1913 a Lancashire vampire in Peru. This is from historycollection.com and it's an article about the undead. Make this bigger for you. One grave in the local cemetery in Pisco, a fishing town in South Peru, has a strange legend behind it. The grave holds the remains of Sarah Roberts, a Lancashire woman who died in 1913 and he was reputed to be one of the brides of Dracula. According to the locals, Sarah was condemned as a witch and vampires and vampire by officials from Blackburn, Lancashire in June 1913. She was flung alive into her lead lined coffin. But before the lid was shut, she cursed her judges and swore vengeance. An event was to occur rather curiously in 1933-1993. Fearful of the threats, Sarah was forbidden burial in any of the local graveyards. Leaving her husband was left to wander the world until Pisco eventually took her. Now, of course, this is a legend. But the fact that they're noting that vampires become trapped in lead-lined coffins is, supports this theory, doesn't it? So imagine these people underneath Notre Dame peering into this thing, seeing a perfectly preserved vampire, basically. So there was an earthquake in Pisco. Sarah's grave was one of the few who survived the, the quake intact, all except for the gravestone that cracked. The Bride of Dracula. Wow. All right. Um, let me go back in here you guys real quick so we've been having some streaming issues haven't we so crazy we're getting into the juicy stuff and all of a sudden we have streaming issues now we're going to get into some of these other headlines here because i've got a lot of updates for you guys and uh we're going to get into some of these alternative sites because this really bothers me okay so way back when before anybody suspected that these alternative media sites were suspect, I had expressed my concerns about them, didn't I? It was just too easy. It was like the whole crypto millionaire thing. It's just too easy. And when things are too easy, then you realize that it's part of a construct that they've created to either trap us or do a rope-a-dope move on us, right? And so several years ago, I started reading the terms and conditions on some of these alternative sites. And I realized that they were no different than YouTube's. And early on, we saw several of these sites come and go. And then we saw the rise of the mega alt sites. And those are the ones that are still with us today. Now, I took a lot of heat and criticism for not hopping off of YouTube and joining and supporting these sites. Well, the alt sites are starting to show their true colors. Remember the impenetrable Odyssey? Well, several years ago, they got slapped with a federal lawsuit, which rendered that site a dead horse. Now, I only use Odyssey to copy my channel over. It automatically does it, so I don't have to think about it. It makes a copy over there that if I have to pull down a video, you guys can go to Odyssey to uh, view those videos. But essentially, 
it's a dead horse because what the feds did is they defunded the currency you can't trade the currency and that's pretty much the entire bedrock of how odyssey is supposed to work then i watched other sites like bitshoot and they were starting to remove content when they swore they never would and then there's other sites that are have had have that have been hacked and all of the customers personal information has been shared with who knows could be the government tracking people so these sites don't have the power that they promised to have okay and then you probably have heard that DuckDuckGo just scrubbed all things Rushka from its search engine so if you go on DuckDuckGo now and you type in and try to find for instance uh Putskin doing a speech we'll call him Putskin anywhere you can't find it you can't find it on a Google search you can't find it on DuckDuckGo search now I tried I tried on Google I didn't try on DuckDuckGo but DuckDuckGo just announced that they're scrubbing all things Rushka so how are we supposed to get the other side of the story because basically America is now driving blind with this whole new crane crisis we're now officially only getting one side of the story and you have to ask yourself what is American media and government so afraid of you know all this happened right before right at the point where Putskin had promised to publish these documents that he found in one of these labs documents ordering the destruction of the entire lab and to get rid of all the materials that would incriminate the US he was he had just announced that they were going to reveal those documents that were going through the cache of documents they were looking for other proof and they were going to publish it to the world and it was at that point that everything Rushka went dark in America they don't want people knowing the truth whatever that truth may be and now here's the latest telegram this had been the, this was the last place I thought because this was a new site right and telegram was integral in helping thump spread his messages wasn't it it was all the letter that shall not be named crowd they all went over to telegram and swore up and down everybody joined telegram 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 and now look they too have banned rushkin state media so what do we do with this what do we do with this well as you guys know i've always been a strong proponent of hiding in the forest rather than getting picked off in the fields so regardless of all this seems to be some some type of peace talks taking shape between the two countries you got zoolanderinsky realizing that he's been cornered pretty much and he may try to compromise and appease some of the Rushkin demands. Now, you never know this by watching mainstream media. But basically, they're approaching some kind of peace deal. But then you've got America basically pouring billions of dollars in weapons into the nuke crane to keep the sacrificial mill going. Even though Rushka already said since the beginning... That it would pull out every single troop immediately if just a few demands were met. Now these weren't harsh demands. They weren't saying that Zoolanderinsky had to leave. They were going to leave him in power. He can stay. They just want some assurances and guarantees. Uh, Putskin wants a promise that Ukraine won't join NATO. That's reasonable. He wants a scaled down military in their country. He wants ethnic fairness added to their constitution. Where if you speak Rushkin, that you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to get beat down for speaking your language. Because right now, they're not even allowed to speak their own language without fear of being killed or harassed for it. And that's pretty much it. He's not asking to, you know, take over. I mean, he is in there. He's in their borders, right? But he's saying he'll leave. And he doesn't even want them to become part of Rushka. 
He just wants some assurances. And this is the story the mainstream media is not telling you. They just want to make him look really, really bad. I mean, it just looks bad. I mean, look at us. Look at the United States. Look at the hypocrisy. Do as I say, not as I do. None of it's acceptable. Nobody should be invading other countries. But look at look at how bad this makes us look. And you got to ask yourself, is this all for a reason? Are they making us look bad for a reason? And we're sitting here because we're, we're so... Uh, we're so misinformed that we actually buy this whole root for my team argument without even thinking about what's coming out of our mouths. You guys, we've done what he's doing right now to, to date, what Putskin is doing. We've done a thousand fold, literally just multiply what he's doing right now times a thousand. And that's the U S track record over the last 30 or 40 years. So what are we talking about? Well, we better get right, right? We better get it right. Because if we keep with this hypocrisy, we're going to piss off the entire world. Right now, they're just afraid of us. But guess what? As soon as we get into a weakened state, it's going to be like a pack of vultures picking us apart. Remembering all of the evil that we've done. We better get it right. So if you're one of those people that's like, ha, ah, rah, 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 go USA, patriotism, yeah, yeah, let's sock it to Putin and all this. You better think again. You better think again and get it right. Because nobody should be invading anybody. But we also have to give fair balance and understand we've done the same thing. Here's what the message should be. If I was the president of the U.S., here's what I would do. I would say, look, everybody. What Putskin just did or is doing made us as a country self-reflect on all the atrocities that we have been involved in over the years. And we want to make a public apology and set a new course for America not to be involved in other people's business. And we now need us all to come around Cute skin included, and let's sit in a room and figure out why all this is happening. And at that point, there would be a revelation, wouldn't there? There would be a revelation because people would begin to realize that all this aggression that the U.S. has been pushing and creating good guys and bad guys is what put Pute skin in a corner. To where he felt like he had to do this. And then we would all have to admit. That if we just everyone backs off and backs down. Then there is no conflict. Now. Of course all this is contingent on. Do you take Putskin at his word? Well he's trying to form a peace agreement. There's this 15 step plan. And he's clearly stating what he'll do. And he's going to put it down in writing. So, if what he says is true, and he's willing to live by that peace agreement, then what, what are we doing here? Why are we sending weapons into this country to fight something that doesn't need to be fought? Right? It just doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, you know, these world leaders, all they do is want to fight with people. Here's the... Rushkin negotiator says Stu Crane is proposing Swedish style neutral state. This was dated March 16th. So just yesterday. And so they're going to try to make a neutral state out of it. This is I think they're going to agree to this. Most likely you're going to probably start this start start to see this thing start to wind down. But look out because guess what? The U.S. doesn't want this to wind down. We just sent over 14 billion dollars. We don't want this to wind down. So there could be some kind of operation that happens to escalate this thing again. So that there can't be peace. And I hope the people on the ground are aware of this and can deal with it. This is crazy. So what else do we have here? Now, yesterday I decoded this video game called... 
siphon filter. Remember that? Let's move this over here. And in the game, this character is basically going to these underground catacombs, an underground lab. He's masked smaxinating every single patient he comes in contact with i'm not making any of this up if you missed yesterday's decode you're going to want to see that there's a real video game that has all this happening in it underground catacombs it actually takes place in the new crane probably odessa even though it names a different place but we know that odessa has the most extensive catacombs in the entire world so there's all these things that seem to indicate that this video game was talking about what's happening right now now siphon filter is actually the name of a virus in the video game that siphons and filters humanity by race by creed by whatever and can selectively take out portions of the world demographically so it's, it's a really creepy concept anyway the guy in the video game infiltrates he enters the catacombs through a church and before he goes down into the catacombs, he starts smashing out all of these stained glass windows inside the church. Well, several of you in the comments section discovered something about the true spiritual meaning of stained glass. Now, I didn't know this, but stained glass windows are full of copper. Which is pretty much everything we've been talking about. Now you wouldn't suspect that that would be the case. Because it's glass, right? But apparently they are. Now you can imagine the magnetic and electrical properties in one of these stained glass windows. And maybe even alchemical properties or spiritual properties that, that can happen with a high conductor of electricity like copper. They could almost probably even create a fake miracle out of this. By looking up some wiring to it. I mean you can only imagine. I'm just thinking off the cuff here. But let's read this. This is the Wikipedia article for stained glass. And it says here. Copper oxides produce green or bluish green. Cobalt makes deep blue. And gold produces wine red and violet glass. Much of modern red glass is produced using copper. Which is less expensive than gold and gives a brighter, more vermilion shade of red. Wow. Now, it makes you wonder. Because I kept digging. And then I found that voodoo dolls. There's a whole voodoo doll made out of stained glass. Now, this isn't just one site. This is many, many sites. Like, this is a thing. It's called stained glass voodoo dolls. Here's some on Pinterest. Here's some on Etsy. And this is like a popular thing. Let's go to this site. Stained glass voodoo dolls. So now you're beginning to see everything come full circle. Because remember, copper is the blue bloods. It's the vampires. And so there's a thing about this stained glass. Here are some of these stained glass voodoo dolls. Now, what could you possibly do with this? Well, I don't know. What do they break little panes out of it? They crack the little panes out. I mean, is this something just people put in their windows? Here you see this one. It's like these window, window stained glass things. Now, who would want that in their window? I wouldn't. That's creepy. So there's all these stained glass voodoo dolls. Now. Here's another clue that seems to point to that these stained glass has some kind of deeper meaning to it. And that is this Tower of Babel monument in downtown Dallas. Let me show you that. Let's look at the pictures first and then I'll show you what I found. Here are some of the pictures here. And this thing looks like the Tower of Babel. Now I visited this. I walked inside of it years ago many of you will remember the decode that we did on this it's this spiraling up and we've learned a lot since then haven't we we've learned that spirals are portals usually they're portals of sacrifice but also portals of birth many people don't know is that anatomically the human birth canal 
actually spirals. It has spiral musculature spiraling into this reality. And even the womb, human womb, has spiral musculature. Look at this thing. This is really creepy. So this monument is called the Chapel of Thanksgiving. And it is lined with 73 panes of copper stained glass. Wow. I, can th I think we can understand what this is really about. Because I believe that the Spiral Tower of Babel was actually an attempt at a portal to heaven. So that the fallen angels could escape the firmament. I believe that's what it was. It could have even been some kind of ruby laser to try to like. They probably had these things like, you know, like positioned into some kind of array that could magnify to a point and try to pierce the firmament of heaven. And this is why God had to shut it down because they were about to achieve what they were trying to do. It was probably lined with stained glass. There could have been an electrical component to it. Who knows? I don't know. I wasn't there. But there's a whole lot more to the story than a tower that they built that could reach heaven. I don't think that that's even physically possible for it to reach heaven. So we got to dig deeper into what it spiritually means. And that means that they were probably making a tower to pierce heaven. To make a hole in the firmament. So that the fallen ones could slip through. Now there's all kinds of apocryphal texts that talk about the Tower of Babel in more detail. And there's, I believe what, what the apocryphal texts say. Is that the kings of the time turned dark and evil they were once loved by god but then they turned dark and evil they wanted to wage war on heaven and they tried to recruit noah and his sons and i think they disagreed and did not want to help them build the tower but they tried to get them to build it with them this might be in the book of jasher i don't know but there's something else going on here right and then the tower failed. Uh, the people that tried to build the tower got turned into monkeys and elephants. And so on and so forth. So there's a whole story behind this. Now, let's read about this Tower of Babel in downtown Dallas, Texas. Now that we've seen the pictures. So it's in Thanksgiving Square. There's also a ring in this square. And we looked at this ring. It was a golden ring. And it seemed to point somewhere. It actually pointed to zero of ground in New York, in lower Manhattan. Chapel of Thanksgiving. Let's read this thing. The Chapel of Thanksgiving is the spiritual center of Thanksgiving Square, which is exactly what we were just talking about. The spiraling shape rises 90 feet above street level, suggesting the infinite upward reach of the human spirit. What? In other words, this is the fallen angel spirit. I mean, we're not fallen angels, but this is what they're really saying here. Okay, they're they're telling a lie here. The chapel's design takes its inspiration from the Great Mosque in Samarra, Iraq. Now we had looked at this mosque, and it looks nothing like. Well, I guess it does. I guess that mosque does kind of look like it, but that's just the cover story. And the ancient spiral of life. The entrance to the chapel is at the end of a hundred twenty-five foot bridge that runs over a cascading waterfall chapel ceiling contains stained glass glory window one of the largest horizontally mounted stained glass pieces in the world 73 panes of faceted glass were designed by gabriel Loire of france feature warmer and brighter colors as the spiral reaches its apex in the center the window appears in the shot in director terence malik's 2011 film the tree of life so the enemy is trying to create their own tree of life now we've had many conversations about what the tree of life really what, what its true purpose was in the garden of eden and what all of the trees of the garden and what their purpose was and these trees i believe the bible is telling us that they connected the garden to earth and to heaven it was like a three-tiered cake. And 
when we were cut off from the garden, basically we were cut off from all of the trees of the garden. Or the trees were portals that once connected all these places together. And the remnants left over are these column basalt tree stumps all over the planet. Now you're going to see these tree stumps on display when I decode raised by wolves because it is the central theme of that entire season two these this column basalt complex tightly packed hexagonal uh, matrix and these were the former trees now were they hexagonal in the beginning no i believe that when they were cut off then they turned hexagonal they they changed with the sinful nature of this world I don't believe they were originally like that because the cube is really our prison, isn't it? And a cube is a hexagon. Now, I could be wrong about that. I don't know. I'm just trying to think spiritually here. So the tree of life was the, the center. It was the master tree. Okay. And we're cut off from it right now, aren't we? Till we're reunited with it after Jesus comes back. Now, the Bible doesn't say we're going to be reunited with the tree of life, but basically Jesus becomes the tree of life, doesn't he? So, in effect, we will be reunited with him. He becomes the tree. That's why he was hung on a tree, because he had to sacrifice. And that's what is our, you know, that's how we are reunited with the tree of life, through him. Everything is through him. All things through him, it says in the New Testament. And for him and from him were things created. Something to that effect. I think that's in Colossians. So, th th there, there's some weird stuff going on here, right? We've got a counterpart. A counterfeit story. With this Dallas Tower of Babel. Now it says here, let's keep reading. Above the entry door is the etched glass window. The spirit of thanksgiving. Designed by the glass engraver John Hutton. Artwork by artist Bjorn Winblad is also on display. Visitors are encouraged to leave a personal statement of gratitude upon entering. Oh, really creepy. Oh, here's the ring I wanted to show you guys. And I drew a line through this. It actually goes through these two buildings that are called actually the twin, the towers that are twin. And it goes all the way to the other towers that are twin in Manhattan. Wow. So, the Lord of the Rings is what this is all about. One ring to rule them all. And look, here we are, 19 years after 9 and a 1 and a 1, which is 19 backwards, which kicked off another 19, which was Vidco 19. Another ring to rule them all. The Corona of the Sun. The ring around the sun. You guys, these plans have been going back since the beginning of time. Have a day. All right, let's keep going with this. Now, most of you, let's get on to some other stuff. Most of you saw the decode that we did interview with a vampire. Now, this came out in 1994. Make sure you guys are with me still. Okay. This came out in 1994. And it was filmed in New Orleans in the French Quarter mostly. And 11 years later, we had Hurricane Katrina, didn't we? That was in 2005, 11 years later. Well, guess what I found? Well, we know that New Orleans was wiped out by a hurricane. But why does that matter? Well, because why is there giant white X's on doors in the vampire movie watch don't go that way monsieur it's the plague go back the way you came why are there giant white X's on doors in this vampire movie and then 11 years later the same white X's show up on doors in the same exact area in real life after a hurricane That's a good question, isn't it? I think it is. And, of course, Brad Pitt, who starred in Interview with the Vampire, 
came back to live in this very area just after Katrina, didn't he? Didn't he? With Angelina Jolie. Was this some kind of ritual? Well, we know the ruler of the areas, don't we? Now, these aren't just white um, X's on these houses. There's different colors, but this white seems to be one of the dominant, predominant ones here. Here's some examples. Wow. I see a red door and I want to paint it black. So, these are the houses that were marked by FEMA, of course. Basically saying that the houses were, I think, condemned. Whoa. Whoa. Look at this. I didn't even read this. A common theme in my interviews was Haitian voodoo. The markings are eerily reminiscent of the Haitian voodoo symbol, the Vive. The symbol looks like an X with designs and a line running through it. The Vive is used as a beacon to the Loa, the spirits of the Haitian and Louisiana version of voodoo. So this ties us directly back to interview with the vampire. Wish they would have put that symbol in here somewhere. Let's look it up. Vive voodoo symbol. Wow. Kind of does look like some of the stuff that you see on the front of there, doesn't it? See if we can find one that looks more like it. Here, here are the common. Slide this over here. This is crazy, you guys. Never know what you're going to find during a live decode, right? So, I guess it kind of looks like the Vive. Here's the Vive here. So, some of these X's on these doors kind of look like this voodoo symbol. Let's go back to it. Wow. All right. So, I'll, if any of you want to go through this article here, I'll pin it in the pinned comment. But uh, that is just nuts. Vive. Voodoo. It's all about voodoo. All right. What else do we have? I got a couple more stories for you guys. Before we get off of here. If you haven't heard by now, J Jesse Smalls, we're going to call him, just got a get out of jail free card. Look at this guy. What a travesty. Now, this is a temporary release until his appeal is settled because he appealed it. But who do you know that gets let out until their appeal gets approved or disproved? This is unbelievable. And there we go again with this double standard thing. Now, my guess is that he'll win the appeal and never serve a day in jail. And welcome to the corrupt criminal justice system. I mean, think of the ramifications of what he did. He could have caused a riot. He could have started a whole new set of riots in chicago there could have been millions of dollars in property damage injuries death but like i was telling you guys the other day when we covered him you know talking about hey if i die in jail it's not because i died by my own hand i think this is way above his pay grade and he basically got orders to carry out this facade he got orders to basically orchestrate this entire thing and this probably goes on more often than you think it's basically the ciaia and social engineering through fabricated and fictitious news stories and situations they basically have to create a false reality and then he got caught holding the bag maybe the police department didn't get the memo I think sometimes the police departments are involved and other times they aren't. I think certain police departments know what's going on and look the other way. But others are just 
oblivious to it. And so they end up going after these people. They never thought that this guy was going to, you know, that they were going to find anything on this guy. Because it's Chicago, right? It's like a safe haven for for people who are very racially uh, divided one way. And so this is the perfect place to try to pull something like this off. But apparently... The police department didn't see it that way. And now I think all these police guys are starting to wake up too. They're like, whoa, they just let this guy out. Uh, he only got 150 days in jail, but he's not even in jail. Hasn't served a day in jail. And the, probably the appeal is going to be one and he's going to get out anyway. And that's because the higher ups went in and influenced the judges to allow him to get out of jail until his appeal is settled. Unbelievable. Now, here's our last story. And, you know, it's creepy because they wait until the gas prices go through the roof. And now they want to have the debate on what's cheaper, electric or gas. These, these people will not stop trying. This is an agenda. So this particular article is basically a cost comparison between electronic vehicles and gas vehicles. But like I said, they wait for the gas to go through the roof, and now they want to do their comparison. So basically what it says, you can save 500 bucks a year by going electric so that you can sit and wait in your car 30 minutes to fill it up. And to me, this is just more proof of why we are paying so much in gas. And now you know why we're also being the ones being blamed as the gross polluters it's all a play to force us into the electric kingdom it says as gas prices hit record highs across the u.s with the gas buddy app showing prices of 515 on the low end in places like bakersfield california drivers with electric vehicles may be feeling smug despite the ongoing economic turmoil yeah smug until they have to sit and wait for uh you know, 30 minutes to an hour to fill up their car. Now, most of these people that drive these these electric vehicles, they've got solar panels at their house. They're charging their car at their house. So, you know, this is stupid. Not everyone's going to be able to do that. Let's keep reading here. Although experts say electricity rates could also continue rising in the coming months, it is, it is still, for the most part, cheaper to charge an EV at home than it is to fill up an, an internal combustion engine vehicle with gas look at this internal combustion in image engine so they're basically you know put our gas vehicles on ice <laughs> this is especially true if you take care to charge during off-peak hours well pretty soon all hours are getting you know no hours are going to be off-peak hours pretty soon everyone's going to be fighting to charge whatever they need to charge and paying electricity rates through the roof. If you plan to charge your EV at any of the increasing number of level 3 DC fast charging stations across the US, you could pay more to charge your EV than it would cost to fill up your tank. So, it costs more. These stations can charge your EV battery in as little as 18 to 40 minutes, which is 80% faster than it would take at a 240 volt level two charger but at what cost so basically you're running around looking for you know electricity to charge your vehicle and the costs are very similar you might say 500 bucks a year on some vehicles but all of this is at the whim of what they want to set the rate at for electricity and as soon as they've got us all by the you know what they'll just slowly tick up the cost of electricity it for to charge these vehicles and next thing you know we're right back where we started and the only one who's going to be benefiting is them because they are going to have complete control of everything so that's what i wanted to show you guys today. that's pretty much the whole show for today i'm waiting on one last episode of raised by wolves before i present the decode to you guys it's i got through all the episodes except the last one I think it's supposed to come out today and as soon as it it publishes i'll be able to decode the very last season finale and put together the rest of 
raised by wolves for you guys. And uh, again, it's all about the tree of life. It's all about the Garden of Eden. These people can't help themselves. They just keep repeating the Bible over and over again. I mean, who in their right mind would not believe the Bible when Hollywood is just continually repeating it over and over again, trying to retell the story of the Bible? So, um, let's read some of your comments here in the chat. Shannon says, Casey, in humans, we have a cochlea. It's a spiral in the inner ear shaped like a snail. Helps us detect low-level frequencies. Think about that for a second. That's a great comment, Shannon. The spiral in the cochlea of the ear. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. How did he create Adam? He breathed life into him. And to me, that suggests some kind of frequency. And so, all of us who follow him, we hear his voice, don't we? Because it's like a portal. So no wonder our ear in hearing is, is spiral based. Because that was the very first portal through which humanity received life. We hear his voice. The voice of creation. So that's a great comment. Alright, back in the chat here. Yeah, I put the chat in slow mode because at the end, it's I want to really read what you guys are saying here. And so uh, that's why it's in slow mode. It's not to punish anybody. It's so that I so we can all read each other's comments because that's what we're here for, right? And as the channel has grown and most of our live shows hit a thousand viewers, um, it's hard to read all the comments unless it's on slow mode. So I think we'll all get a lot more out of it, won't we? All right. Thanks, Tom, for moderating. Appreciate you. Tom shows up every day to moderate for us. Helps me focus more on presenting what we have. Everything was spoken into existence, yes. Now, the enemy is consumed with that. He tries to recreate what God has done. But he can't. He cannot create. He can only mimic, can't he? And it's only God's voice that can create things. Notice how, now, it's crazy because, think of this. Think of a mother singing to a child in the womb. Think about how amazing that is, how spiritual it is. And you wonder if the resonance of a mother's voice is somehow affecting the child in a positive way. Right? Now, this whole sound thing repeats as well in Raised by Wolves, and we'll cover that. But basically, let me give you a little bit of the backdrop for those of you that are not familiar with this series. It's a story about the end of humanity. It's, it's a science fiction series. And if I remember the plot correctly, it's a story about humanity creating this weapon, which is this woman who is an android. And they create her so that she can basically end this faction of humanity that they believe is causing problems the atheists in other words the atheists are seen as the good guys in the series and the christians the bad guys now the christians aren't real christians they're mithraic christians the false christian they worship soul soul invictus they actually say that in the series and they create this woman who is basically a weapon uh in the technology cannot be beat she basically rises in the air in the shape of the crucifixion of christ in the position of the crucifixion and she uses her voice to kill people it's a shout with some kind of resonance that disassociates particles are you getting chills yet because i did when i was watching the series that's how they took down the slim towers it was a sound weapon and most people can't come to terms with that because we want to believe that it had something to do with, you know, explosives that were set. And it could have. That could have augmented it. But I believe they have a sound weapon. And this is them trying to be like the Most High, right? Because God can create with sound. But the enemy can only destroy with sound. He can't assemble sound uh, matter together to create anything. So he just destroys it. 
This is why the Bible calls him the destroyer. Using sound to kill rather than create. So this is a common theme in Raised by Wolves. She runs around using her sound to destroy things as well. Alright, let's go back into the chat here. Now, if, if you want to do a little bit of study on this, because I know this all sounds far-fetched, but it's actually very real. Look up somatics. I think it's spelled... Let me see if I could spell it. I think it's somatics. I think it's like that. Here on YouTube. And you will see thousands of videos of people using sound. Different sound notes. Like notes, you know, on a guitar or something or a piano. And they send that specific frequency through like a loose medium which would be like sand or sugar or salt and what will happen is is that that medium will begin to self-organize into geometric patterns now if you've never seen this before it is amazing because literally the sound creates the shape and there's no other explanation for it other than supernatural. It's basically how God created us. There's a love component to it. Love frequency. Because through love we were all created. We're given choice. This is why we get sick if we're not living our lives right. Or for bad people. And this is why the enemy is trying to adjust the uh, frequency around him so that evil thrives in the frequency rather than good this is why evil people can sometimes live a very long time because somehow the frequency or in and around their lives has been adjusted so that they thrive rather than good thriving and this is why we shouldn't be holding on so tightly to our life because at the end of it we're not even made for this place this place isn't our home and jesus tells us this the frequency has been altered we no longer can thrive here as good. This is why good people never make it to the top in corporate America and these things. You don't see any good people. It's because the frequency is designed for evil. I don't know how they do it, but they've altered our reality. And so this is why the least of us is the greatest and the greatest of us is the least, the Bible says. Because we're not meant to be here. This is not our home. And so, it's you guys, this stuff is deep. It's very, very deep. It's all about the frequencies. It's all about the frequency. Now, I tried to map some of these somatic shapes, geometric shapes. shapes. Some of them are hexagons, some are pentagons, some are triangles, some are concentric circles. There's all different kinds. And I tried to make sense of it all because I thought maybe this is some kind of language. Like maybe this E note or this G note or this G chord you know means something but I, i'm not bright enough to figure it out i couldn't figure it out like it would take years of study to break all that down and to figure out exactly what these notes mean and what the shapes mean i mean maybe it all fits into some kind of a pattern some kind of a matrix maybe it all fits into some kind of a shape that tells a story like maybe if you map these out from start to finish it would make a picture or something i don't know I don't know, but man, what a trip, right? You guys, what a trip. Now, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow yet. Um, like I said, this last episode of Raised by Wolves is coming out today, but I don't know if I'll be able to get my hands on a copy of it, um, but it should should definitely upload before the weekend. So, uh, you know, we'll get that up on Monday or Tuesday, but we'll probably be back on here tomorrow, maybe with some more headlines or something. I appreciate all of you guys coming out today, and I love each and every one of you, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care and be safe.